I spoke in the first session about allergies in Kuwait in general and about the pollen seasons and different types and symptoms of allergy. I'm going to try to talk today to you about the diagnosis of allergy and how we make it in the allergy clinic and about the management and how you treat your allergies. The diagnosis we'll talk about at the end. In the beginning, you have to understand that treating allergy as a chronic problem requires chronic use of medication, which means you don't just treat it for one day or two days. Often people suffer for many months and sometimes years. Depending on the symptom of allergy, we decide on the medication that's required. For example, if we talk about nasal and, for example, nasal and eye allergies, they are caused often by many pollens and environmental agents. The first treatment option is using antihistamines. Examples of antihistamines are like a common medication like Zyrtec, Aries, Ebastil, Tilfast, and other medication. The problem with these medications is that sometimes they don't treat all the symptoms, so they can stop the sneezing, but not the congestion. They can stop the runny nose, but not the headache. So in doing these medications, they don't stop everything. As well, many of those medications give symptoms, side effects to patients. Many patients get dizzy, they get sleepy, they cannot concentrate, and if you use the, med the medication for a long time, sometimes it affects your concentration, ability, and memory. So it's not preferred for long-term medication, although often people overuse it over the counter without recognizing the symptoms and side effects. Uh, the second part of the medication is using steroids. Now, many people are very afraid of using steroids, and they are very afraid of the term steroids because of the common side effects with steroids. So people using steroids, for example, by mouth or by injection for many months can have large weight, poor, uh, poor uh, skin condition, they get acne, they get high blood pressure, they get high sugar, and it can affect their bone density, and they get poor, poor bones. So uh, they get hair loss as well, and other complications that are not happy for many people. So we don't talk about this use of steroids, because that's really not advisable. The use of steroids in treatment of allergy is often not associated with those symptoms, because the dose we are using is very, very, very small in comparison, and it's used topically. For example, if you have a skin allergy, you use a topical steroid cream for a certain time. Then you make it to something else to reduce the risk of side effects. If you use a nasal steroid, for example, I can give you an example. For example, this one is a common one, just an example. The dose in such medication is so small that it's licensed to be used in children about two years of age, and sometimes for many years without any side effects because the dose is so small and only goes inside the nose. It doesn't go into the blood or circulation any concentration. There are other medication as well used for asthma, for example. A common medication is this one, where you use it as an inhaler. So it allows you to open your airways and breathe better. So uh, again, sometimes you use the puffers like this one, like Ventolin. Ventolin is what we call a bronchodilator. It opens the airways. This is your emergency medication. So often we talk about allergies in that we have acute medication, medication to help you now, and then medication to keep you well for a longer time that you use for a longer period of time, maybe for a few months more than a few days than you do with acute medication. In using these medications, there are different types of allergies. So the nasal allergy, the chest allergy, and the skin allergy with different kinds of creams, such as these creams, which can be used as well. This cream, for example, is used for management of skin allergy, but it's not a steroid. Now, it has an advantage of being not a steroid, and it, it does help you with your eczema, but you need to do it in a controlled way to keep things well. Another medication that we often use for uh, asthma patients is what we call Singulet, which is basically um, a, a tablet or a, a syrup that you take in a box like this one. So it's called like this one, Singulet. And this medication as well reduces the risk of allergy in the nose or in the lungs uh, in a long-term use as prophylaxis. The other thing you could use for nasal allergy is what we call a sinus rinse. So for example, this bottle is a sinus rinse. It's called Sinusalt. You apply it to the nose to clear it up. So you apply water, then you add a special salt to that, like this one. You add it in, then you close, 
and then you use it on a daily basis to clean your nose from environmental pollutants. You put it on one side, you squirt gently, it comes all the way as a circulation, clearly cleaning your sinuses and cleaning your nose give you a fast relief from your nasal congestion symptoms. The last medication I want to talk about is the most important for me as an allergist. The medication I'm talking about is what we'll call allergen-specific immunotherapy. Here I'm going to talk about the diagnosis before I talk about this treatment, because this treatment is a natural treatment that's used for treating a specific allergy. For example, I would do a skin test by pricking the skin through a, a pricker, and through using this prick method, uh, I will result in a test of the allergy, I will result, have a result. For example, I would have here a pollen, a cat, a dog, and other things. I would prick it on the skin, and I would have a result of swelling within about 15 minutes. Now, say if I have an allergy to a pollen that's grass, or a pollen that's salsula, or other pollen, or a cat, I would give you a spray that has inside of it the cat or the pollen that you have allergy to. By spraying inside the mouth for a few months to a few years, what you do is that you get your body used to this allergen, so it doesn't bother you anymore. This is a long-lasting effect. You can have it as a spray, or you can have it as an injection under the skin. This is a special allergy medication that's used by only by the allergist and used for many years. It's been there for about 100 years already. It provides you relief of allergy symptoms to your nose, eyes, and lungs, and reduce the risk of side effects, reduce the need for medication as well, steroids and other medication, and it has a long-lasting benefit being a natural medication. Once you stop it, the benefit does not stop like you do with other uh, medication. Once you have the other medication for allergy, once you stop them, you go back to your basic, which is having the same allergy symptoms. But when you use the immunotherapy, what we call the Elaj uh, al-Ta'awudi, or Elaj al al-Ta'awudi, which is specific allergy and immunotherapy, you get long-lasting benefits. It's the only medicine that's proven to reduce your risk of having asthma as an adult. So if I start this treatment in a young child who's about, let's say, five or six years of age, who doesn't have asthma, just has nasal allergies, I can stop him from developing asthma by about 40 to 50% uh, as he gets to an adult age. I recommend people who have allergies to have the proper testing and the proper evaluation for the symptoms and allergens and see whether it's option for them to have allergen-specific immunotherapy. I conclude my talk at this time, and I thank you for your attention.